Whoa. Slow down there, Hoss. What do you think you're doing around these parts looking so cute? You've just entered cutie town, and I'm the sheriff. Around here, there's one rule. You either kiss, or you get kissed. Which is it gonna be, bucko? been a little bit. It's been a little bit and it's too early and I'm Anthony Carboni. And I'm Sage Ryan and we're gonna lean into and the mic the, the whole time. This is the first best and you, only news show in existence. We're gonna tell you the news like this. Listen, uh, where's, where are the two mics? Where are the two mics? Just be quiet, which is what we're gonna do because we've only got <laughs> one mic. <laughs> Everyone uh, be cool. <laughs> We're good, we're good, we're good. Thank you for starting us off strong. Thank you for the subs, you sweet beans. Thank you for supporting the channel. Look. Look. Have uh, we spent the last, how long have we been doing the show? Seven, seven, eight se months? Seven days. We've been doing the show for, for, we've done seven episodes of this show. In that time, we've made a lot of upgrades. We've gotten new microphones, we've gotten a new camera. We painted a wall. We went, we listen. We learned how to straighten out the camera. Here's something that like, Here's something that any life coach or personal trainer is going to tell you. Everybody thinks the climb of life is just straight up like this. No. There are peaks and valleys. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you move back to go forward. Did we have two professional microphones? Yes. Are they not here this morning? Yes. Yeah. Does that mean that we're getting worse? No. No. Yeah, e no. That's what you mean. Hey everybody, there's also a new channel point uh perk. Oh, Alonzo. Channel point reward. <laughs> <laughs> Alonzo in the live studio audience is like, so Anthony forgot the mics. Hey, shut up. It's been a week. <laughs> um, there is a new channel point redemption you can do um that I put in for us and it's it's exactly eight AM. You can redeem channel points to tell us that it is exactly 8 a.m. Thank you. And see, everyone is doing that. Because it is. Because it is. It's We're still doing the lean. Because I'm worried we, about the mic now. I don't think we have to. I don't know, y'all. Uh, apologies it if go it up, is It go awful. up to the red a little bit. Yeah. That's where you want. We could even, we could even. Oh, I wouldn't. We could. I wouldn't. We're going to lean back. Well, we're not going to so, stay like this the whole show. Yeah, but we're going to, but that's what I'm saying. So we could... Anyways, uh, hi, good morning, everyone. We missed you very much. Thank you for joining us for a Friday show. We're very glad that you're here. We do have some news to tell you about today. Anthony, I swear to God. Yeah. Stop it right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, I will. We're going to tell you about games and things. Yeah, listen, we, were, we, had, we had nothing. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm going to be real with you. We have been gone for a week, and we were like, what do we got? And we looked at each other, and we were like, I got nothing. And then... And then... All the game companies said, no, no, no. We know that It's Too Early is coming back. We yes. know that we, we know that Friday is their big return. Mm -hmm. We've got to make the big announcements now. You're absolutely right. And they also all said they were indie devs. Okay, we want to start off by talking about Indie World, because Indie World was a lovely showcase. Of course. You know we love Nintendo Directs. They're our favorite thing to talk about. And, uh, Hakasta, yes, my shirt does say Dungeons, Dragons, and Depression. I like that one even better than the Dungeons, Dragons, and Diners, and Drive-Ins, and Dives. Because mm -hmm. that one's more real. It's true. That one's more real. Um, we love a Nintendo... Uh, direct. We love indie games. Uh, our two favorite things. Um, now, there were a lot of great indie games announced. Mm -hmm. But also, like, a couple games by Sega and Konami? Excuse me? Konami? Sega? And not only is it, not only did Sega and Konami announce games, but the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game trailer came out. And, hey, that's not an indie license. 
Look, we're stoked for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Look, we really are, and we, we love .mu. Mm -hmm. uh, we, lo we loved Streets of Rage 4. Yes. Loved we really it. Really did. Um, so we're very excited for this, but hey, some of these are like, some of these are not indie. It's just, it's not, yeah, that's it. It's not an indie game, so it's weird that you put it in the indie showcase. If you had some other stuff to do, do a regular uh, direct. We will never say too many directs. Never. Like, is, is the Nintendo Indie Showcase. Mm -hmm. as an indie developer and you're like, well, I mean, technically Sega develops all their games in house with their own money. Yeah. I even looked up because I'm like, what's the technical definition of an indie game, right? An independent video game is typically created by individuals or small development teams without financial or technical support from a larger game publisher. Oh, hold this on a does second. does not count. Oh. Now, so here's what I was saying. Is the Nintendo Indie Showca Indie World Showcase the place for Sega to announce the remake of The House of the Dead? Is that where they want to do it? No. Okay, I was saying I had looked the up... One of the biggest arcade games of all time. Right. Released on four or five different consoles at least. Not independent. The studio now, behind it. Now technically, Sega does develop all their own games with their own money. That's not what the definition is, though. The definition is a smaller uh, individuals or a smaller development team without the financial or technical support of a large game publisher. Look, the line of indie game and mainstream or triple A game, first of all, first we had indies and games, right? We yeah. had indie games and big games. Yes. Then we had triple A double a and double a is what we used to call like you know your 20 or 30 person studios you're like your double fines and things like that mm -hmm. who who have no trouble getting a publisher or getting funding i mean no trouble is relative but you know what i mean uh where if they want to make a project they're going to be able to make it and they're like 20 people at the studio making mm -hmm. it but now indie indie now is like is like the early 2000s when people were calling things indie film mm -hmm. Sega has 5,349 employees. And they're all working on the House of the Dead remake. Now, does Sega have a problem with, with, with resource allocation and project management? Who knows? Not for us to say. Maybe it takes 5,349 people to remake the House of the Dead. Um, it would take that many, I think, to remake Typing of the Dead in all its glory. You remember Typing of the Dead? Fuck, that's a good game. Anyway... There were a bunch of announcements, There though. were a bunch of announcements. We're not going to dwell on that because, because it takes focus away from the fact that there were some really wonderful, wonderful games announced. We've got some of the highlights here. Yes, we do. Uh, this is Road 96, and it is a procedural road trip adventure game. Every time you take the road trip, it's different. Yes. We love it. We love it. Absolutely. Perfect. Um, next, we've got Aerial Knights Never Yield, which, hey, is this an Anthony Carboni game? You better fucking believe it's an Anthony Carboni game. Ooh, look at that art style right off the bat. Yep, 100%. Oh, what's up? Somebody watched Into the Spider-Verse and was like, what if we make yeah, a video game? This looks a lot like Into the Spider-Verse. Now, it, it, it does look like it's just sort of like an endless runner, yeah. but, but dang, the style. Yeah, the style is great. Dang, the style. Endless runners make me want to die. Look, he has his own little... Not for me. Uh, we've got Last Stop, which is uh, from the developer of Virginia, if you remember that, uh, that adventure game that came out a few years ago mm -hmm. that's really beautiful. Um, Oh, uh, Bertaka Brett in the live studio audience asked if that was a tub game, The Endless Runner. 
No. No, I would get too bored. Mm. I would get too bored in the tub playing that game. Mm. Um, hindsight. Hindsight looks really, really interesting. Hindsight is beautiful. Look at this. Ugh. We love an indie game. We do. We love an indie game about a, about a youth growing up. As someone who just played Before Your Eyes, woo, woo. a lot of you that are here in chat were there for that playthrough last Saturday, and like, my god. It's still, that's still in my inbox. The ship of Theseus seems to be sailing, so I, <laughs> might, I might be playing that today. Uh, Oli Oli is back. Oli Oli World. Dang. Which I played. Oh, it's good. And they've, you know, like a lot of other things, they've sort of ditched the super retro pixely art that they had. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's just like an endless 2D I'm trying to figure game. out what aesthetically it reminds me of, and it's definitely some sort of, like, Flash game. Yeah, it's definitely got, like, a bit of an old school Flash vibe. It's mm -hmm. got a bit of a picture book vibe. Like, it just looks like a, like a, like a find the image picture book, you know? Yeah which there is something like that coming later on. Uh, the Longing, this is wild. If you have not played The Longing, uh, you can get it right now on PC, but it's coming to the Switch. 400 hours required. It is the slowest game in existence, and it requires 400 days for your king to awaken in real time. And you must do as much as you can before the king awakens over a year. Look, I love that. Like genuinely, Look how mentally, slow they go up those stairs. Mentally, I love it. As soon as I started playing, I would I would lose my mind. Look how long it takes him to walk through that little uh. Like genuinely, love it. I'll just sit for a little while, wait for the king to awaken. I, I love that. Conceptually, visually, I'm obsessed, but I am so impatient as a person that like I'd get 15 minutes in and be like, fucking no! no! I get so mad when characters in games walk slow. Yeah. Oh, that's this whole game's vibe. Yeah, I know. That's, that's this game's that's the point. whole vibe. Yeah. Of course, we have the indie hit Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Shredder's Revenge, uh, which looks like a very fun beat-em-up. It looks like your classic fucking arcade cabinet uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. I'm very, very into it. Uh, I love that they're doing the 2D pixel art Ninja Turtles arcade game, but they were like, we're gonna redraw all the art. 100%, because it's beautiful. It's definitely like brightened up and crisped up a lot. Ugh. It looks real good. It, it looks so good. We've said before how much we love just like fucking 2D beat-em-ups. Big fans in this house. Yeah. Um, and Ninja Turtles was my favorite Cause you can like, game as a kid. Yeah, same. Whenever they had it. I mean, look, most of them didn't have it. Most of my local arcades did not have the TMNT at cabinet, but when they did, but ooh, when they did, ooh, ooh, that was my thing. When they did, the joystick was broken and loose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, a lot of good stuff. Now this one, this one, was getting a lot of buzz mm -hmm. after Indie World. Uh, Getsu Fumaden, which is a sequel to a 1987 Konami game. Mm -hmm. This is the this is indie developer Konami. You may know them from such small indie games as Metal Gear. <laughs> uh, but people were really into this one because you're running around in an ukiyo e painting. Look at that. That's beautiful. Uh, and it's a 2D Metroidvania. So a lot of backtracking, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of picking up powers and re-exploring things, uh, but a lot of beautiful artwork. Konami mostly known for their pachinko machines and washers and dryers, and occasionally canceling a video game, is uh, putting out Getsu Fumaden. Uh, and it looks very good. It's beautiful. Um, this one, my friend uh, Alexa Ray Korea, this is her first uh, games writing job. Aww. Previously of uh, the Imagine Games Network. And this oh, is called pretty. Aztec Forgotten Gods. We wish we could play you any of the sound on the trailers and play more of them and react with you. However, we do know that we would um, get troubles from. We don't, you know, we don't somebody. as much. We don't as much from the publisher, from the game publishers. We we do more from the movie people. But yeah. hey, 
it's always nice to not get our VODs taken down. Right. This is a beautiful game. I, I love all the traversal elements. The visual design is crazy good. Yeah. I love the idea of, like, old Aztec design fused with, um, like, old Mesoamerican design mm-hmm. fused with sci-fi. Always looks really cool. Yeah. Um, That's beautiful. It's a beautiful game. Mm. So much geometry, says lots of kittens. Yes. Yeah, right. Um, roguelites. We love a roguelite. Southpaw Games is releasing Skull the Hero Slayer. I don't... I didn't do it. I don't play a lot of roguelites. Oh, all, it's like all I do. I know. It's like all I do I know, is that's play very a much a thing. I love a roguelite. I We're love just making roguelite. noises. We're just making noises, ah. but not into two microphones. No. Only into not. one. Um, I like that we have gotten to a point where the barrier of entry for pixel art is now mm-hmm. incredibly high because, and rightfully so, mm-hmm. a lot of indie devs would get, flax, would get flack for pixel art because, you know, they would just do it quick. Yeah. Because they didn't have a lot of money for, uh, for art assets. But, but this, this is so pretty. That's real. That's really pretty. That's real. <laughs> um... So that's already out on Steam, apparently, and will be coming out on Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, was one of my favorite games. Oh, of, Art of Rally. Of the last couple years. Art of Rally is just a beautiful top-down rally racing game, and the art style is gorgeous. <sighs> yeah. I just, I can sit and play Art of Rally for, God, forever. That's a good Switch game. It's a great... That's hey, a good handheld you game. You want to know about a bathtub game? That's I a great that. bathtub game. 100% could see that. Draw yourself a warm bath. Get out your bathtub desk. Naturally. Which I, uh, which I own. Mm-hmm. And you should also own. Mm-hmm. Put your Switch into, on the little kickstand. Mm-hmm. Grab your Pro Controller. Or, or mm-hmm. if you can, and you got the room to rest your arms, uh-huh. why not pull off those, joy ca- those Joy-Cons... And play in comfy boy mode. You know? Sure. Comfy lean your, boy mode. Lean your arms on the bathtub. Have the Joy-Cons right here. Perfect. Sure. Yeah, why not? Perfect. Uh, Kiwi looked very cute and looked like something I will probably play. Uh, I'm easily sold on a cute game with cute animals. It is a puzzle solver. Uh, and it's just... Look, I want to get it for me, and I want to get it for my eight-year-old niece also. And for and for all, the eight-year-old niece in all of us. Yes. I love it. Look at right? that. Right? Look at the burbs. They got to they gotta label everything. They got to they gotta mail it off, but they're just burbs. But they're just burbs. And they're the weird birds. Yeah, they don't have any arms. They got no bird arms, which birds usually use for flight. Mm-hmm. Those are called bird arms. They don't have those. It had, it had a butt sticker. Yeah. It's cute. It's very cute. I'm looking forward to that. There wasn't a lot of the actual gameplay for it. Um, that one will be coming to August, uh, coming to August in Switch. That will be coming to August in Switch. And, uh, Congratulations, August. I'm hoping we'll see a little more of the actual gameplay. Obviously, that was just kind of like a, a cutesy trailer. Um, but I love, I love a little team, ba- like a little puzzle solver. Mm-hmm. It looks like a very, uh... It's got that sort of like frantic, but not too frantic, overcooked sort of look to it. I was literally thinking like overcooked, like moving out, like, Mm -hmm. you know, those kind of uh, fun little genre of games. Fun little genre of games. I'm a fan. Uh, uh, Earlier I mentioned the the aesthetics of like an old Where's Waldo or Find the Hidden Object. He's just drinking some water. So much water. He drinks a lot. Listen, so Dagger is here. Uh Uh-huh. Dagger is Anthony's dog. Dagger is my dog. He's my perfect prince. And uh, if you're very good, uh, I'll show him to you later. He's a beautiful boy, and he's nature's own perfect son. And uh, he tries to impress Sage. He genuinely thinks he and Sage are dating. He thinks that he's courting Sage. And so, like, if I leave him food out while we're here, he eats it all as quick as he can, and he looks at Sage while he's doing it, like, look at how much food I can eat. And if I pour him water... He just uh, he just drinks an entire as much water as I leave for him. He drinks while looking at Sage, going, "Look how much water I can drink." 
very impressive. Are you impressed by me? It is very impressive. Does he bring Sage things? Yes. Usually his toys. To yeah. Go. <laughs> yeah, he'll put a toy down at Sage's feet and just be like... I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. It's uh, Barden Barbarian in the live studio audience, hello, hey, says, morning. I too try and woo people by eating as much as possible <laughs> while remaining, while keeping eye contact. Yes, <laughs> that's morning. what I do. You go, to a, you go to a first date and you just, do you, yeah. want, do you want to order more? Because I could order more. <laughs> what I like to do on any first date is try to go to a place where I could win a t-shirt for eating a lot <laughs> and then win that t-shirt. And I find that that works for me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. 50% of the time, it works every time. Uh, but so, yeah, so Dagger will have to go running out of the, uh, of the apartment the moment we're done with the show. Because yeah, absolutely. he just drank a liter of water. Yep. Uh, but talking about old, like, Where's Waldo hidden object games, mm -hmm. uh, just th that was such a genre of picture books for a long time. And I don't know if it still is for kids. I don't know, because it's like, I know it was when I was a kid. I don't know that it doesn't exist anymore. I'm just not a kid. Yeah, but They're also, not anymore. but also iPads. That's a good point. Do like I don't have books anymore. Like a big lavish picture book with a hidden object. Thank you. Is that is that like a thing? I don't know. I don't know. But what are the reading habits of children? What are the re what are the reading and eating <laughs> habits of children? Uh, but this as is Labyrinth much City. As they can to impress you. The Maze Detective. So these are these are like mazes, but they're also picture book mage mazes mm -hmm. that you need to find your way through while also finding objects that people are asking you to find. Cute. So you've got to, you're in a Where's Waldo, mm -hmm. finding your way through a giant maze, looking for clues in the giant maze. Yeah, that's super fun. That's it's very, very very cute. It's cool. That's a good expansion upon that concept. I used to man, Where's Waldo? Animalia. Did you mm -hmm. ever have Animalia? No. Yeah. Ooh. Shout out to anybody like that remembers Animalia. Damn, that was mm -hmm. awesome. Ugh, the I Spy books. Yes, and I Spy is an app now. That's why I'm kind of like, do, do, do kids, kids still do this? Um, but I will definitely play Maze Detective. That looks great. Yep. Uh, Weaving Tides. Weaving Tides by the artwork looked like really heavily furry. And the game doesn't. Yeah, the promo art was like but the promo art was like big time fursona stuff, which like which cool. yeah, no shade. We support it. Yeah, which I just feel misled. Look, oh, that's yeah. the art, right? Yeah, those those dragons do be giving you the eye. Those those dragons are a fursona. Those dragons are like, those dragons be like, hey. Do you remember the subreddit dragons fucking cars? It was like one of the first big weird subreddits that became like publicly known. Did you ever see dragons fucking cars? Does this look like the face of someone who knows what you're talking about? Normally, and has seen dragons fucking cars. Normally, I would say you you'd come across it. You're the internet detective. You had to have seen dragons fuck. But yes, it's people who draw art specifically of dragons fucking cars. Um, a lot of tailpipes. A lot of tailpipes. Gatsby's correct. I got you, Anthony. I can never forget. <laughs> anyway, weaving tides. Ride a ride a dragon around that's giving you In flirty patterns. eyes, and then weave a pattern while the sexy dragon gives you sexy eyes. I like it. Yeah. All right, man. There's still so many. There's so many games. Obviously, we have the Independent House of the Dead. Yep. Remake. Naturally. Uh, this is by the same studio that did the uh, Panzer Dragoon remake mm. for uh, the Switch, which is, I guess, how they snuck their way into the indie showcase. Yeah. Kind of the same way that like Dot Mu is like, mm. but we do indie, and it's like, but Dot Mu, you also did Streets of Rage, and you're doing Ninja Turtles, but indie though. But, like, we're doing it small. Yeah. Konami's like, uh, we're indie. And it's like, no, you're not. It's like, didn't spend $100 million on game? Very indie. Only 90. <laughs> Very indie. So art. Um, but, I mean, I like the idea of House of the Dead. I mean, I like the idea of the Joy-Cons potentially as, as light guns. That's good. Yeah, that's fun. Right? I want to play it. 
Do I have my, oh, do I have my Labo gun still? Can you use it? No, because the switch rests in the Labo gun, unfortunately. <sighs> they closed the Labo website. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Um, okay, this next one, Ender Lilies. Um, it is like a 2D platformer, it would appear. Um, but one that I'm willing to play, it's like not quite... Combat-y it, enough to be considered a roguelike, I would think. Yeah, it looks... Well, it gets there. They say... They call it a dark fantasy Metroidvania. Yeah. And let me tell you something. As somebody who just found out that the Criterion channel has a 4K uh, transfer of The Last Unicorn, uh, I'm very beautiful. into this. I think that it's such an interesting choice aesthetically. Um, it would appear that the character that you're playing as has this kind of, like, shadow that appears and, and has specific abilities around it, and it fights for it yeah it's got sort of like a um yeah she doesn't fight for herself it's kind yeah. of like an eco sort of thing where you're where you're the forces that mm -hmm. protect her reminds me a lot of when you unlock maria in um castlevania symphony of the night where maria has those animals that attack for her yeah uh but also like it really does have that like 80s dark fantasy animated film aesthetic. And I love it. Me too. Uh, I really enjoy that they took such dark tones with all of the environments and all of the enemies and then the like light that just emits from your character. Ugh, mm. fuck me right up. Um, you, read the, you ever read the manga The Girl from the Outside? I haven't. Uh, I'll lend it to you. It's really good. It's about a little girl who lives in a world where if you leave town... There are monsters in the forest, and if a monster touches you, you turn into a monster. Mm. Um, but for some reason, she's immune. Okay. Uh, and uh, she lives with a monster who has not quite monsterfied, but he's doing it slowly, and he calls himself Teacher, and he tries to protect her. It's Cute. a very good... I think you'd love it a lot. Yeah, that sounds lovely. Um, anyway, Ender Lilies. I want to play it. I want to um, play it nine times. All right. And then we have Beasts of Maravilla. Which looks very interesting to me. Oh, this it one looks dope. It is a 3D adventure game, and that is my favorite kind of game. I want to talk to these fucking water dragons and stuff. Hell yeah. I want to do everything that this game has to offer. Now, of course, a large portion of this game is taking photos of animals. And you know that any game that has a photo mode... Is Anthony Carboni approved? But I'm surprised you didn't, you haven't played more Bug Snacks yet. I got it installed on like three machines. I know. I played a lot. I played a lot of the. Um, I played some of the early beta. Yeah. Because I was I was on. They the, got a good photo mode. I was on the developer beta. They do have a great photo mode. But it's clear that you're an adventurer, um, journaling and studying a bunch of really fucking cool, unique creatures and beasts. Listen, when your yes. nostalgia for Pokemon Snap is through. When we all get Pokemon Snap and we play it for a day and we go, yeah, I remember this. And you want a game that's got a little more. It looks like Beasts of Maravilla Island has mm -hmm. got your back. Yeah. Um, this was huge news. Yeah. Now you want to talk about the ultimate bathtub game. Mm -hmm. We played a little bit of this one together. Mm -hmm. Baby, let me tell you about Fez. This was fun. Fuck, I love Fez. Mm -hmm. I own Fez. Fez is another one that I own on everything. I have the mobile. I have the mobile version of Fez, and sometimes I sit in the bathtub and I use Remote Play to play the PS4 version of Fez. Yeah, it's a very, very good time. Um, it makes really good use of the environments, being able to turn and twist, uh, and you kind of fuck around with concepts of gravity uh and and then you platform oh it's so good the the way you play the way it plays with 3d space and mm -hmm. it was just it's so clever and so fun and the art is so gorgeous and the soundtrack damn rich vreeland mm -hmm. disaster piece friend of the show oh the dude can do no wrong the dude can do no wrong. It's great to have Fez. If, you, if you've already played Fez, play it again. If you haven't played Fez, I have, I have Fez on the Vita. Wow. Yeah. Fucking love Fez. If you haven't played Fez, now's the time. Get in the bathtub. Everybody? Get, get in the bathtub, motherfuckers. It's time to play video games. Get in the tub. Get in the tub. It is time to play games. Tub time. Tub time. Hey, everybody. <sighs> It's 8.47 a.m. here, but it's also tub time. It should also be tub time where you are. If time is working correctly, please put an arrow next to your name. 
From what from my recommended channels page, it's always tub time on Twitch. <laughs> you guys think that we you guys think that we get that, that sweet tub viewership? You think we should do a hot tub sode? Think we should do one of those I'd have to wear, according to the terms of service, one of those nineteen twenties. Yeah. Yeah. Like. <laughs> I have a bunch of friends who have done it. And I would like to say, I would like to make it very clear that the perspective on this is that I unquestionably, and I will only speak for myself, and hell, I'll speak for the channel too because I fucking made it fight me. Uh, we unquestionably support getting that bag. Get the bag. Secure the fucking Secure bag. Secure the bag. Stream in a hot tub. I see, I see these women in the hot tubs on the front page, and I say, that woman's going to make good money this year. And I support it. That woman's gonna make good money this year. We will not be another one of those goddamn Twitch streamers complaining about women using their bodies for views because if you're not getting views, it's not because they are. It's because your personality sucks. Dude on Twitter complaining about hot tub women. Hey, and you know what else? Sometimes, sometimes, you, you, you sometimes you want to watch uh, quality programming and sometimes you want to watch something that's a little silly and sexy you yep. know what i mean yep. you don't have to be in the mood to watch hbo miniseries chernobyl all the time damn that's stupid mm -hmm. you want to watch you want to watch some lady ride a pool float in a hot tub fucking do it there was one more game one more game and it's a big one it's a big one uh you played the original I have not played it, but I'm very familiar with it. It's a Sage game. It's a Sage. We've talked about it on so many occasions. It's a Sage game for sure. Mm -hmm. Oxenfree 2. I loved Oxenfree. Yeah, it's... I'm super aware of how me of a game it is, uh, and I think that maybe I will stream the first game to hype up for the second game. Oh, perfect. I think that would be good timing. You're going to love it. The only thing that you're not going to love... Mm-hmm is in the sort of in the sort of middle to end of the game mm -hmm. there is a lot of um you know kind of revisiting areas that you've already visited because mm -hmm. it's an adventure game right and you talked about how you hate it when characters move slow a little slow moves a little slow moves a little slow um it looks but very interesting we didn't get a date for it stylistically mm -hmm. uh so beautiful and the idea of like tuning in a radio like mm -hmm. People who can dial into nostalgia in the right way. Yeah, we love. I mean, everybody's always trying to dial into people's nostalgia because it's very mm -hmm. powerful. And if you can do that, you get a great audience. But yeah. it's hard to do. And Oxenfree was just able to do it so well. Yeah. Um, I'm very intrigued by it. Uh, this game will be following the events of the first game pretty much... Uh, Pretty closely, it would appear. And we don't have an exact date for it, but we do know that it's coming this year, supposedly. It is coming in 2021, um, but we don't have any more details than that. Night School, of course, uh, last year released After Party, which was their uh, their follow-up to Oxenfree. Which also looked really, really fun. I watched some gameplay it, of. It's a great game, mm -hmm. and it just did not pop off the way Oxenfree did. And a lot of friends, so a lot of friends of the show... Mm -hmm are in uh, After Party. Yeah. Sarah Amale, Janina Gavankar, mm -hmm. like so many of our friends are in it. And it was, it I was a great so game. I saw so many people hyping about After Party that I was surprised that it wasn't. Yeah. That it didn't catch on. I, want, I wanted it to do better than it did. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, that was Nintendo's semi-indie world. Yeah. Semi. It was... It was indie. I would say it was mostly indie, even. On the flip-flop... You had indie developer, just small indie developer Capcom uh, with their big Resident Evil event this week as well. Y'all, y'all know how much I love the Resident Evil franchise. I am so, so excited. Can I just... I, I so love specific things and uh, very specific entries in the Resident Evil franchise. Can I just complain? Yeah, absolutely. Yesterday, they had a big Resident Evil Ooh, event. Ooh, you ready for a champagne problem? It's such... I, I know. I know what I'm about to say is such a champagne problem. They had a big Resident Evil event, and they invited streamers to stream it and participate, and they gave people access to a bunch of cool stuff that I won't tell you what it is um, for Resident Evil 8 Village. And they, they emailed me, and they said, you can. And I said, I can't, because I had work 
Yeah. She couldn't stream for Resident Evil yesterday because she had to stream for Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, well, yeah, and Smosh. And Smosh. Yeah. Was, it was a busy Thursday, and I was very... It was very hard. It was a, such a cool thing. They emailed me a fancy badge that said official Resident Evil streamer. Whoa. Yeah. You can use that to uh, to get discounts at Applebee's. <laughs> I you got can, a honestly, fun little badge that I could have put on my stream yesterday. If you, uh, if you want riblets anytime before 6 p.m., you can show them your Resident Evil streamer badge and you get 40% off any order of riblets or any drink that comes in a souvenir glass. Yes, it's a very champagne problem to have a Dungeons and Dragons stream that I can't participate for. But, <sighs> anyways. So, anyway, there was a Resident Evil showcase. There was, and there was some fun stuff announced. Um, I've talked a lot before, and we've talked a lot about what are they going to do with RE4. You got your RE2 rem remake, you got your RE3 remake. Um, four sits on that edge. It sits on that edge of a still playable game, unlike two and three, really. Yeah, and it had an HD upgrade yep. not too long ago. Mm -hmm. So what so do you like, do? Is, what are we gonna get a remake fully, like RE two and three? I think eventually, but I think they gave us something really, really interesting in the meantime that I'm excited about, which is Resident Evil four in VR coming to Oculus. I find this very interesting, number one, because Resident Evil 4 is uh, the best game in the series. Fight me. Uh, and number two... Seven's also very good. Seven's also very good, but I think 4 is the best in the series. Uh, but... So much of Resident Evil 4 mm -hmm. is about the perspective of being over Leon's they shoulder. They show a lot of talking and a lot less gameplay. Very short gameplay clips. I mean, this is going to be really fun, but it's mm -hmm. like, it's so interesting to me. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird to not see Leon yeah. right in front of you. But I'm, you know, I love anything that's a full VR experience. Yes. We're big VR proponents. And we're both Oculus people. Oh, God. You know, I, I would tell people all the time because I've, I've had, you know, I've had multiple VR headsets. Mm-hmm. And people would always ask me, as a guy who's had multiple VR headsets, what VR headset should I get? And I was like, don't. Don't buy VR. Mm -hmm. Just don't do it yet. Yeah. It's not ready. And now? The fucking Quest 2 is ready. The Quest 2 is ready. Get in the bathtub and play the Oculus no, 2. No, no. Oh, I've done oh. it. Oh, I've done it. That? Yeah. An Anthony, you can't recommend that. That's incredibly mm -hmm. dangerous. Yo, you could just put you, put, you get in the bathtub, you put on the headset, and you play some, like... Some Anthony. like, uh, I got some meditation stuff. I got some Anthony. music interactive no. stuff. Anthony, no. Anthony. Ah. Oh. Anthony. It's good, man. Now, is Resident Evil 4 VR a bathtub game? Absolutely not. Probably not. Anthony. But there are a lot okay. of good bathtubs. Again, um, speaking for the channel, I'm going to say we do not recommend that you wear your Oculus Subnautica Quest in the tub, says no, Lee Green Griffin no, no, in the no, live no, studio no, no. audience. As I was saying before. Subnautica. As I was saying, we do not water recommend. Water in water. We do not recommend. I will cut this mic, and it is the only mic. I, uh, we do not recommend uh, wearing your Oculus Quest 2 in the bathtub. That is incredibly dangerous, both in the way that it completely takes away your real-world senses and the fact that it is electronic and attached to you uh and you could probably give yourself uh, a a big bad shock but also no you try that tetris you do the you do the tetris effect tetris effect <sighs> what else was at the resident evil showcase lots of stuff uh we got some stuff about the uh about the resident evil uh, new demo for eight. Mm -hmm. I was gonna go into the Netflix show. I'm not gonna go into the Netflix show. I'll go no. into the Netflix show. Well, we'll go into it, but not we'll right get now. We'll get to the end, at the end uh, of this. You could, you will be able to play the RE8 demo mm -hmm. um, very, very soon. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, uh, North America May first on the PlayStation. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. So exciting. So soon. Uh, Europe. Now this is the um, this is the village and castle demo. So this is this is walking around and seeing the environments. Mm -hmm. um, so May first in North America at five p.m. Pacific time, you do the village. 
Uh, May 2nd, 5 p.m., you get to walk around in the castle. Uh, they're only available for those eight-hour windows. Um, be cool, that's our only mic. <laughs> well, Anthony. <laughs> um, we got a new village trailer. Look. They know that Vampire Mommy needs to go front and center and everything now. Oh, yeah. They definitely caught on to that very quickly. And they've put Lady Dimitrescu... I mean, look, she was already going to be an important part of the game. But also, look at her beautiful, cool vampire daughters. Yeah, you're definitely more into... You are more into Laughing Bug Lady. Yes. Laughing Bug Lady's kind of your jam. Yeah. 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 Um, so... <laughs> we both, both just stared off for a moment. Like, yeah, we yeah. had a moment. We had a mo um, we had a moment about the about laughing bug lady. We got a peek at the mercenaries and mercenaries got... mode. That's yeah. great. If you look, every every game should every Resident Evil game should have mercenaries mode. I was mm -hmm. I was a little bummed that they didn't work mercenaries into the remakes in some way. Yeah. Um, but it's cool. It's cool. And something I'm very excited about, we got an announcement of the Resident Evil and Dead by Daylight collab. Oh, that's good. Very, very exciting. I think will lend itself very well. I'm sure you're going to be able to be uh, Claire and, you know, I, 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 probably Leon. Maybe, I would assume maybe Chris. Leon. Sometimes they'll put in Chris. Uh, Ms. Valentine? I don't know. Um, Ada, Ada Wong, sometimes they throw into, into mm -hmm. multiplayer stuff. Who knows? As always, with Dead by Daylight, uh, I'm thinking Leon and Nemesis. I'm definitely thinking Nemesis. We oh, gotta Nemesis get Nemesis. Has gotta as a be killer. a killer in Dead We've by Daylight. We've gotta get Nemesis as a killer. I totally agree, Ronan. Nemesis um, or I Mr. Hope we X, get yeah. The teaser is a hint. I do see that. Um, you can see the struggling of the person there, but I, I guess it depends on how many we get, right? Like, yeah. It's kind of varied depending on collaborations, but like two is a pretty good guess. Um, with Dead good. by, if you've never played Dead by Daylight, with most Dead by Daylight collaborations, like they've done in the past, with um, they did Silent Hill, or I don't know, I, Silent Hill was official because they had Pyramid mm -hmm. Head for realsies, but they had a bunch of kind of back and forth on on some are officially licensed and some aren't. But essentially, it's just cosmetics. Yeah. You'll get a map, you'll get a killer, and you'll get a survivor. Uh, based on the franchise. Um, Proton Beamed is just like, stars! <laughs> yes! That'd be so cool. That'd be so good to hear in Dead by Daylight. So good. Um, um, we also got some specs. Yes. We got some specs for this game, and let me tell you, this is what you can expect on your platform mm -hmm. for the Resident Evil 8. Uh, PlayStation 5, uh, 4K HDR, 60 frames per second. Turn on that ray tracing, it drops to 45. Uh, you get the same for Xbox Series X. PlayStation 4 Pro is going to run at 1080-60 or, or 4K HDR 30. Uh, looks like Series S is going to be uh, a little bit better um, with nothing quite reaching 60, but uh, Series S is going to be 1440p HDR with 45 frames a second. Ray tracing takes that down to 30. Uh, Xbox One X will do 1080-60 or 4K HDR 30. Xbox One uh, 900p, 30 frames per second. And of course, Google Stadia, the target platform for Resident Evil 8 Village. Mm hmm of course. 1080, 60 FPS. Is that where you'll be playing it, Anthony? Of course. I have, I have three Google Stadias, so I can play uh, Resident third. Evil uh, three times in three different rooms. Did you get a third? I'm sorry, what? Anthony, when did you get a third one? I'm sorry? Did you just... What did... Huh? So, uh, that is the Resident Evil Showcase. Very exciting times ahead as we lead up to the release of Resident Evil 8. Um, moving to some other stuff that's going on right now. Uh, Twitch has uh, has called a bunch of view bots. Yes, which, look. It's great. Very happy about. This is good news. It was very interesting to see the response to it because a lot of streamers were upset. They were concerned that Reels followers were getting swept up in it. Um, as I mean, it, we've talked about on this channel, we got hit by view bots. We got hit by um, view bots. And we reached out to Twitch asking if they could correct it in any capacity. Uh, and Twitch was like, deal with it. I mean, it's, 
on a, on a support level, mm -hmm. it's tough to go into the way to do it. I understand why they gave us that response because the mm -hmm. way to do it is not into go to, into an individual account's followers and try to figure out who's a bot and who isn't. Mm -hmm. um, and now that they have removed literally millions, millions of view bots, I yep. can see that they were moving towards a larger tool that allows them to do that. Look, we all hate bots. Okay. Yeah. We hate bots for multiple reasons. We hate bots because they come into chats and they spam. Mm -hmm. We hate bots because uh, they mess with the algorithm and fuck up who you see on the front page. And we also hate bots because there is the potential, and this has happened before, of the streamer being punished as if they were view botting when they were just hit with it out of their control. That's the thing. People will use it as an attack. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, I know if I view bot this, this channel. Mm -hmm. Twitch I can also them. report them and take the, and get them taken down. Yeah, so it is scary, honestly, when your channel gets botted. Uh, it is very good news to have them all purged out. We're very happy to see it. Some streamers, on the other hand, not so much. They were upset that they had lost such great numbers and they didn't believe that that percentage of their numbers really could be bots. And look, there, it's entirely possible that some of the sweep did actually fuck some people over, but for the most part, I think people are kind of unrealistic about what percentage of large followings are bots. We see this on every platform. Yeah. On every platform, somebody will come in, and, uh, YouTube will, mm. or Instagram will yeah. remove a bunch of like hundreds of thousands of bots at a time. And people will, people will wake up screaming because the other side of this bot thing is there are a lot of people that, you know, streamers and influencers that make their money based on these raw numbers. Yeah. How many followers do you have? How many how many uh, subscribers do you have? Right. That's how they decide how much money they make. And also, some of these people just got fucking egos. Yeah. And they and they wanna they wanna fucking front. Right. And they wanna flex like they have a billion D followers. Exactly. And so when they wake up in the morning, and they see that they've lost, some of them have lost literally millions of followers. Yes, uh, that includes. They freak out. Uh. Garbage, garbage, XQC, who we have talked about before. Ooh, he's a garbage um, boy. And he woke up to a loss of 2.6 million followers. And we say good. <laughs> hey, maybe we should follow that trend. This, look. Everybody, unfollow XQC. When people get angry about something like this, I mean, they're because that's their thing, is they base their reputation on this huge mm -hmm. number of followers they have, and they, and then they wake up and they see they lost 2.5 million followers, and they go, no, 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 people love me. Yep. I couldn't have lost 2.5 million followers. Mm -hmm. uh, Soda Poppin <laughs> lost 3.2 million followers. Ooh, so yeah, they went from 6.5 to 3.3. .3. That's half of their following. That's really big. And I'm like, look, I, I don't mean to giggle. Like, I, I don't know anything about Soda Poppin' as a streamer. I have no no opinion on Soda Poppin'. I don't know a damn thing about them. Same. But it is very interesting to see these people that have such inflated numbers. And it's like, could all of that have been accidental? I can't help but wonder, right? If like, wow, you really got hit with a lot of follow bots. Or... Or, or you saw an opportunity to get yourself up there. And this is something that happens too. Yeah. Like I have had many YouTubers, Instagram influencers, people like that tell me that like, yeah, occasionally you, you, you buy some, you buy some followers. You don't do it all at once. Mm -hmm. You buy, you buy a few thousand at a time and you, and you bounce your way up there. And that's how people do it. And then just by that momentum, like I said, algorithmically you get more uh, you get more sponsors, mm -hmm. you get more eyeballs on you, and you get more perceived heat. And so you actually attract more real followers is the thought. But when yes. you lose half of your followers to bots, right. uh, you, may have, you may have flipped the switch. And once again, we're not saying that this definitely happened and that Soda Poppin definitely bought half his following, mm -hmm. but seems like a lot. Um, and one of the other motivations of follow bots to follow bot random people, if it is not a targeted attack, is that these accounts that are following people need to look real and they need to be actively following many accounts. So if so-and-so bot followers, those bots that are going to follow that account need to follow a bunch of other people. So a lot of the time you're just hit in the, the kind of like 
extra overpour of mm-hmm. we need these accounts to be actively following different people so yeah. it doesn't if you look at just I've, this account there have been a few great videos about how stuff like this works and i think uh, i think a couple of years ago the verge did like a big this is how this is how it works mm. and um, it was really interesting to see like there are followers and then you can buy like high quality followers and like best ones quality that are followers. less likely to get hit in purges like this yeah so ones that have like a higher quality follow will be a bot that also leaves comments, yeah. uh, you know, has a friend list, right. you know, and then other, uh, like a highest quality one will be one that's actually like maybe posted some pictures and stuff and was like very active and yep. there's a difference in price. It's wild. <laughs> Holly Weird in the live studio audience says, for Christmas, you know, followers make great gifts. Hey, get something for the influencer in your life. Get, get a 5,000 high quality follower package with two weeks of tummy tea for just forty nine ninety five. And use our code, it's too early at checkout. Anyways, <laughs> uh, we are. I'll sell some tummy tea. I won't. I will. No. I'll be like, this is, listen, you know what you do is you put the tummy tea into the bath water, put on your Oculus, and really have yourself, really, really have yourself a Zen experience. We do not condone um, diet teas uh, on this only, channel. Only or, as um, bath salts. Only as bath salts. <laughs> Anyways. And another scammy scam scam. We love to talk about scammy scam scams. I love a scam. There is an app on the Apple App Store. No. <laughs> There's an app. <laughs> Welcome to birds. We're birds. <laughs> um. Anyways, there's an app that, A, if you're in the U.S., looks like it is for children, four and up. It looks like it is one of those cutesy little monkey car- cartoony platformer games collecting bananas, doing sweet jumps, right? Yeah. Like a Jungle, Toontown mini game. Jungle Runner 2K21. Of course. Just, uh, it just looks like just any sort of cheap, yeah, endless runner. But if you set your VPN to Turkey and relaunch the exact same app, it becomes a gambling app. <laughs> a little online casino that has Bitcoin and Ethereum. Ooh, I love it. I love this. Got them, boys. We got them, boys. That's not good. Now, this has already been taken off of the App Store because of a bunch of the articles that blew up, but it has been coasting for a good while before this was caught on to. Um, And I'm curious also how many other apps are able to do that, where they, um, for instance, like place it in another country as a completely different app that doesn't have as strict of laws around gambling or around you know, uh, app regulation. But, but also, getting around, I mean, uh, getting around app store policies, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So it doesn't matter if Turkey allows gambling apps mm-hmm. because Apple doesn't. So by doing this, by geofencing it, it's it's really a clever way around it. Now you may be saying, how do they do, how do they do the in-app purchases? It's just a web view. Yep. It's just a website view. Basically, it turns into a browser with uh with javascript code for touch enable yep and it's honestly respect respect this uh developer colin malachi mm-hmm. uh also had another app on the app store that got taken down for the same sort of thing magical forest puzzle mm-hmm. uh just sneaking things in um it's very good it's very good um and it's something that would not get caught by the QA process, right? Yeah. So fascinating, fascinating turn of events. I want to do a geofenced app, but I don't want it to be like, I don't want it to be a gambling den. Okay. I want it to just turn into something else. We should make an app that when you're in one specific space in the world turns into something else. Sure. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to release... We're gonna release the Pixel Circus app, mm-hmm. and we're not gonna tell you where, BBs, but if you're standing in the right place, you're gonna get a secret message. If you change your VPN to somewhere else, you'll get to see the spreadsheet. <gasps> or if you wait long enough, because we will fuck up. <laughs> 
So far, so good. Coming back strong, everybody. We may have one microphone, but we have zero spreadsheet reveals so far. Ooh, baby. Um, it's kind of fascinating. So um, Apple's App Store, looking into this a little bit more, Apple's App Store will allow gambling in certain areas of the world, mm -hmm. but just in a few. And it's these areas where it's like they literally could not get into those areas. Yeah unless they were able to release gambling apps. Like those are the most popular apps in that, area. like fine. Apple's like, look, if we, that's what we gotta do to make money. Um, yeah. But this is, Turkey does not have those laws. Nope. This is secret for Turkey. This is big secret. I think it was bold of them to put it on an app that was marketed to children. Fascinating. I'm sure the approach there was hoping that it would slide even more under the radar because it looks so family friendly, but also like, but also, if I was, like, listen, there might be a way, you could double dip, right? Because it's $1.99, mm -hmm. and if a kid sees Monkey Runner... Yeah, you make actual money. You make actual money playing. on Monkey Runner, and then maybe you can even throw us some in-app purchases for Monkey Runner. Get yeah. some extra bananas. And maybe that child will develop a young gambling addiction, and it'll spend its entire life needing both the in-app purchases of extra bananas for Monkey Runner and also another spin on that wheel to get their Ethereum up. Here's what happens. The kid falls in love with Monkey Runner. Mm-hmm gets used to in-app purchases, loves a loot box, mm -hmm. turns into a gambler. We've seen it, we've read the studies, we've read them yeah. here on the show. Mm -hmm. Be has a huge gambling problem, racks up a massive amount of debt, mm -hmm. loses their job, loses their family, has to, has to run away from debt collectors, gets on a plane, escapes to Turkey, lands, opens up Monkey Runner for just a moment of happiness, remembering how much happiness it gave them in their childhood, and bam, it's a gambling app. Their life wasn't a waste. They can gamble all the time now. Monkey runner and loot boxes for life. It's a happy ending. It's an ending. What was the kid's job? Putting the little labels on Chiquita bananas. Nice. Hey, uh, monkey runner, not a bathtub game. The gambling a casino, gambling casino, might be a bathtub game. No, we can't. We talk about AAA games all the time. All we do is recommend gambling. Hey, that's an eyeball, and it's sitting on a ledge. Why it do? Oh, because that's a webcam. Why, you might ask, this is a uh, weird mod that they are calling the iCam. Um, the people at Human Computer Interaction Lab um, are, they made it as kind of like a, a little statement piece uh, to remind you about uh, the way that your webcam is and can be watching you. It moves around and it blinks and it's horrifying. Um, it is intended to give you the perspective that the webcam that is sitting I on top lick of your computer it. is like an eye. Why? What? I want to lick that weird robot eye. Isn't that a fetish? Wasn't there a time where um, school kids were um, getting a bunch of infections because it trended in? Look it up, Sage. Look it up. Look it up, Sage. Look it up. Yeah, it became a thing. Yeah, it was a Japanese eye licking trend carries a blindness risk. Uh, in Japan, there was like a particular area and it was trending across like high schools where um, School kids were getting fucking insane amounts of, of eye infections. Wait, look at him gently caressing it. I would rather I not. Shh, it's okay. It's okay. Why are you doing that? I'm gonna lick you. Why did I'm you I'm gonna do that? give one good lick. Uh, that's, why were they do it? It was just a high school trend. It's just, just a cool thing. Up. All the cool and kids it, are licking it, eyeballs. They call it worming? Uh, and it was like a show of affection for high school kids. It was romantic. Fellas, is it gay to lick the homie's eyeballs? I, yeah, I wouldn't with that name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, a bunch of kids were getting pink eye and shit anyways. <laughs> uh, don't lick somebody else's eyeball, you weirds. I mean, look, 
if you and your partner want to lick each other's eyeballs no don't if that's a thing for you I, and you're doing it safely and you are it. there's no such thing as safely licking an eyeball could you put some drops in after no is the problem that the kids are worming without putting the eye Think drops about in all of the germs that are on your tongue yeah listerine ain't gonna fix it uh-uh y'all uh -uh. oh a little listerine in the eye <laughs> That's what you Listerine do. Listerine ain't gonna fix it, y'all. Just a little, you know what you do is one part bleach, one part water right after warming. <laughs> Anyways, don't put your tongue in anyone's eye. Oh my God, do you know what that just reminded me of? Did you ever watch home movies? Were you a home movies person? Home movies is this excellent, excellent cartoon that used to be on Adult Swim. <gasps> oh, I do remember home movies. God, it was the fucking kids and they were weird. And they were squiggly. The and, yeah. Yeah. But there was one where like yes. he, he has, he makes his little, his little baby sister puts a marble up her nose and has to like go to the hospital. I remember that. Uh, I remember that because my little sister did put a marble up her nose and they had Whoa. to use an industrial medical vacuum to get it out of her tiny little nose. She was so small. But um, in the episode, after his baby sister does this, uh, he, make, he tries to make a safety video about not putting that. and the safety video has this catchy song and it's like yeah. don't put marbles up your nose put them up there do not put them up there and kids love the song so much that they put marbles in their nose all the time because they're like i don't know it's just such a good song it was so catchy oh that's the puppet show that they do there yeah there it is there it is Don't put marbles up your nose. Put them up there. Do not put them up there. Anyways, um, I don't know. That's weird. The point of that, though, was a reminder that your webcam can be engaged and is dangerous to have open. If it was an eyeball looking around and blinking at you, you might be more aware that anyone could be watching you through your webcam. Get a no, little webcam cover. You know what it is, is... What you do as an artist, and I learned this I learned this in my limited time in art school, what you do as an artist is you, you do the cool thing you want to do, and then you come up with the artist statement afterwards. Yeah. Do the weirdest, I'm going to make a webcam that looks like an eyeball. Why? Just to see if I can do it, and I think it would be neat. But then when you're done, you go, Cyber it's a statement security. about the, op the panopticon that is our life. Think about that. $10,000, please. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. But still, like, do get a webcam cover. It's a, it's a good idea. They're very cheap. You can Lots get them of anywhere. kittens, who is an artist, who has sent us art uh, in the live studio audience, says, you are so correct, as an art graduate, can confirm. Proton yep. Beam says the same. Yep. Now, listen. Talking about art and buying, yeah. the buying of art. Yeah, we only... I'm not, a, I'm not a hype beast. That's a lie. I don't buy useless things. I don't he collect buys. a lot of garbage. That's not what I do. That's not what I do in my life. We're very, I live a minimalist lifestyle. Incorrect. Adidas Cross South Park Towley sneakers. I don't even like the Towley episode. I think Towley's annoying. You know what I like? You say episode? Episode. Episodes. But that first, you remember that first one? Oh, I do. And it was like, it was like, hi, I'm Towley. It's like, you want to get hot? And it's just shut up. Yeah, shut and Towley up. has taken a much, like, is, is a big part of the series again. Great. Hey. Since uh, Tegrity Farms. I don't great. I don't keep up with South Park, but I will pop in every once in a while. Um, Those are good but sneakers. But these are good sneakers. They're good looking Do you know sneakers. what they look like? Is They look like the Grimace. Mm, they do look like Grimace. I had Excuse a pair. Excuse me. He's the Grimace. Show him some respect. Absolutely not. There's, what is there? I'm sorry. Are there more Grimaces out there? No. He's the Grimace. Like Robert Pattinson is. The Batman. I had a pair of shoes, um, like slip-ons, when I was a teenager that had like spooky eyeballs and like a, a mouth on it, um, and I wore them to death. I thought they were so fucking cool. They were the only shoes I wore for like three years as a teenager. Yeah. Because they had those eyeballs on them. I love a weird pair of sneakers. I love a nice loud pair of sneakers with a real quiet outfit, you know? I love a loud pair of sneakers with a loud outfit. That's true. That's true. I'm loud. Um, <laughs> hey, everyone. Hello. I'm loud. Uh, oh. I'm tired, too. We put this wide. We've been, we've been up for a while. Ah. Um, 
talking about, we forgot to talk about the Resident Evil TV series. It's true. We it's forgot, because it's weird. It's because it's weird. Uh, we forgot to talk about the Resident Evil Netflix series, the animated show, mm -hmm. which does, there it goes. Yeah. Um, look, and the reason why is that's a, this is a cut scene. It's a video game cut scene. But it's not even like a current gen cut scene. This is a PS3 cut scene. I don't, it's, it's weird. I don't, um, so this is Leon and Claire, and they're apparently protecting the president from a zombie outbreak in the White House in this series, and, um, I don't know. I'm definitely getting, like, look, 10 years ago or whatever it was that we got Advent children, this was okay. Yeah. I'm not a fan of the art style of this. I'm happy to play a video game that looks like it, but I do I am not drawn to it in any way as a show, personally. Yeah. Um I don't know what I want it to look like. I think like if you gave me any choice in the world and you were like, what would a Resident Evil cartoon look like in your head? Yeah. I would love for it to be an anime. Yeah. That would be first choice for me. But would I would want it to be like a two D um so uh, there is some confusion, and, and I do want to I do want to mention this because we were confused about this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Barataka Brett in the uh, live studio audience says this is a movie, not a series. That's actually that was misreported, mm -hmm. um, and you can see in the trailer that they released that they actually do say that it's a series. But it a is lot a of places limited series. But a lot of places place. were calling it a movie mm -hmm. when it actually isn't. Um, so. You know, there it is, in a Netflix original anime series. Which, uh, but we were confused about that, too, because even, like, Game Informer was like, this is a movie, and then IGN was like, this is a series, and then some other it site was It was IGN like, that said it was a movie. Yeah. And Game Informer said it was a series, and it is a series, uh, but there was a lot of misreporting on that. What's also very interesting is the Wikipedia lists it as an upcoming CGI web series. I'm sorry, an, up an upcoming CGI anime web series. Why are we calling everything anime? I'm so confused. I mean, if this was made by Capcom in Japan... I guess. You can call... I mean, I guess you can call it... It's sparkling... It's actual sparkling anime from the anime region. Yeah. But it it's weird. Because, like, look, the Lupin the Third movie was all CG. Mm-hmm. It's anime. I don't know. The Astro Boy movie that came out over here, not anime. And also not Astro Boy. Okay, but uh, it just looks strange to me. Like I said, it's been 10 years since Advent Children. It's, uh, it's been 20 years since the Final Fantasy movie. Yeah. Like you can't, stuff can't Ooh, look like this. I would love for it to look like Castlevania. Yeah. Oh, that'd be good. But and, yeah. And here's the thing, it would have been cheaper. Yeah. Although, well, maybe not, because it looks um, like they're just using in-game assets and stuff. Yeah. Like they really just spruced like up it. an in-game asset. Um, it's not... It's not a, an art style for me. No. But I hope it's very good. And I'm also not, as far as Resident Evil goes, I'm also not big into lore. Uh-huh. Like, I don't... There's too much lore. I think that's why they had to do Seven the way they did it. Mm-hmm. Because it was just like, okay, skip this lore. We can't, we can't. Nobody wants to know about all the different Weskers and corporations and... Yeah. I hate it. I did enjoy the way that Seven was removed. Um, Anthony, we've only got a little bit of time left. I know. So that's our big finish for sure. We got, we got, one, we got two quick things that we want to say. Number one, because it's a couple of casting news oh, uh, things that I think are, uh, all right. are pretty important. We'll do it. Uh, number one, The Last of Us series has found their Tommy, Joel's brother. Mm -hmm. And it is Gabriel Luna, who you might know as Ghost Rider from Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think that's a great, uh, I think that's great casting. I didn't make it that far in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, that's fine. It's totally I fine. I gave up uh, about halfway into season one of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, because they kept hacking into the mainframe, and I didn't like it. So I will say, much like any series from the Whedon family, because that was a Jeb Whedon, uh, Melissa, I forget her name, uh, but, you know, obviously with Joss on board as well, uh, like every Whedon series, the end of the first season has a twist, and it's a big twist, 
and if you can hang on, you're like, oh, that was cool, cool I twist. Hated every but character, you don't have and that guy's to. like, mm, I'm brooding, and the source of it, I believe, is some kind of family issues, but it makes me tough. Yeah, Fuck she's off. she doesn't get better, unfortunately. Although at some Does point he? she, although he, at some point she gets she gets powers. Issues. They both were brooding with family issues. <sighs> Piss off. All it's of them fine. Were brooding. I'm sure it was fine. Um, I'm sure it gets better. I do gets, believe so. It, it gets better and worse and better mm -hmm. and worse, but it never gets good. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was good. He played Robbie Reyes. Uh, cool. He was a great Ghost Rider. Uh, did they have the money for Ghost Rider? No, but they did it anyway. Okay, that's they something. did it anyway. Um, and then. And then, in the second piece of very good casting news... Mm -hmm. Uh-oh! 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 Mads Mikkelsen is being uh, added to the cast of Indy 5, y'all! Uh-oh! So that means we've got Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Mads Mikkelsen. Baby, this is a, this is a Star Wars .5 reunion! All the good point fivers are there. This, this, uh, hey everybody. Hey everybody. Indiana Jones five might be like really good. I'm so excited. I'm the so only, excited. The only thing I don't want, this is very important. I do not want Indiana Jones, who is Harrison Ford, mm -hmm. that he will be playing Indy in this in this movie. I old, do not. Old man Indy. I do not want him to smooch Phoebe Waller Bridge. I do not want that. Mm -hmm. He is old enough to be her grandfather. Yes. Please, I don't think no, he will. Please no smooching. I don't think they, I don't think they will Maybe smooch. Maybe they'll bring back Marion again. Maybe he'll be with Marion. <gasps> I would oh, love it if he's still with Marion. Oh. You know? Oh. Wouldn't that be great? Oh. One of the, the, one of the highlights, maybe the only highlight of Indy, of Indy 4, of Crystal Skull, was Marion. Mm -hmm. God. That'd be great if Indy and Marion were both together still. Yeah, right? And then maybe Mutt is just uh, uh, away at school. <laughs> maybe Mutt is just off. Maybe he's like, okay, Mutt. In the beginning, it's like, okay, Mutt, I love you too. Click. Mm -hmm. And that's all we hear of Mutt. Mm. You know? Yeah. Wouldn't that be something? All right. And our last story of the day and also least. No. Most. Baby, we got it. We got it. It's that new Fast 9 trailer. Everything's different. Dom's a family man. He's wearing even more bronzer. The cookout's happening. The family finally has the cookout. They're invited to the barbecue. It's all real. The, the Khaleesi's assistant is there. It's all happening. But what? But what? Is there maybe... Is there maybe one more job, Sage? And is it, is it connected to family, Sage? Is it about family? I don't know anymore. Can cars now get picked up by uh, stealth jets? Is that John Cena? Is John Cena Dom's brother? Yeah. Is he wearing a turtleneck and chain? Yeah. Does Charlize still got the bowl cut? Why does Charlize have a bowl cut? Oh, baby! Why did they do that to oh, Charlize Theron? Oh, baby! Look. Is Han there? Is he eating chips and sniping people? Whoo! Charlize Theron is a perfect woman. Whoo! Why did they give her a bowl cut? Whoa! Fall out of that building! Jordana Brewster's still there and she's still getting that paycheck and you can tell she's fine with it! <laughs> she's super fine with it! There's Han eating chips. All, all Han do is eat hot chip and tell the truth. <laughs> oh, man. And let me tell you, this trailer ends. This trailer ends with the way... Well, first of all, we got to talk about the fact that they connect magnets to, to a car. And they've got powerful electromagnets that allow them to pull and push cars through buildings. First of all, we got to mention that. They can, they can use it to manipulate cars, the powerful magnets, and also push a man out of a car. I'm sure there's a bunch of people got to be, right? Or am I, am I too old? Are people making uh, Jesse Pinkman memes with this? Or do we not meme Breaking Bad anymore? I don't know. The magnets. I think people have too much respect for this film. I disagree. To, to, magnet, to magnet meme. But there's a very important part at the end. 
and I want, I want us all to witness this very important part. Here are our boys, taping up, getting airtight. Why? Because their car has been connected to rockets. It's happening. It's happening. Tyrese and Luda are going to space, baby. F9's going to space. <laughs> they fucking did it. They fucking did it. <laughs> They're going to space. No. They drove a car out of an airplane. They drove a car up and down the side of a building. They used, they had a car that grabbed a vine and swung from one island to another. What's left? They're going to space, baby. If you are a patron over on our Patreon, you'll know that we watched... Five, six movies? You've seen six of the films. I have seen six of the films, and Anthony um, documented my response to all of them. Uh, that's up on the Patreon. I can assume that Anthony will make me watch this one, and that will probably also go up on the Patreon. So now's a good time to tell you, you can support us on Patreon. It helps us keep the lights on. It helps the show keep going, and we appreciate it so much. Please remember that this series of films started off as a movie about people who drag race and steal VCRs in Orange County. Always remember that. Anyways, y'all, that is our show for today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for starting your morning off with us. We appreciate it so much. We missed you all week. We missed you, BB. We did, so we're so glad that you showed up for our Friday show. We will, of course, be back on Monday. We will keep you updated. If you're not already following us on Twitter, sometimes schedules get a little wonky, and the Twitter and the Discord are a good way to keep track of it, so join the Discord. All that is absolutely free. We don't subgate it because we, we want you to be it. there. We want you to be there. Your most valuable thing that you We have. domgate it. Come in tough. The most valuable thing that you have is your time, Dominant Toretto. Do he's a do domination Toretto is his name. Anyways, uh, <laughs> the most valuable thing you have is your time, and we are so appreciative that you choose to spend it with us. But hey, also, we appreciate all those subs that came in today. Oh, we got we a appreciate lot of subs those very, very generous donations that came in today. Hey, let's shout out all the supporters welcome to the family open a corona we're going to space blue right. pirate the fallen j17 holly weird with the sub jeffrey's 01 with the follow self-aware can opener with a seven months of resub as joriel with the 75 dollar donation thank you as Flying Queso with the resub, using that Prime sub. We like that. Thank Take you, money out of that Prime pocket. Thank you. Lesage 26, 54 Aqua Snakes, $15.69. Ask if we've checked out Lost Words. I don't believe so. Mm -mm. Uh, we'll have to do that. Jack Snacks, thank you for the uh, for the recommendation. KR Maniac 040, G Rex 13, Mount Joy Hoops. Uh, Glenn Coco, good for you, Glenn Coco. You go, Glenn Coco. Ronan Monkey with a hundred bits. Ronan, you're a mod. You don't have to do that. We love you. We appreciate it, and we love you. Barely scratched. Fifty-four Aqua Snakes with four, five, six bits. Mega Ghost Gaming and Kurt with the ten dollar donation. Davy Dave Boy with a hundred bits. Uh, Blykeheart giving that sub to Bijan who hosts who one time on the internet right here on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Fr Flannel Fries stolen tag with the resubs. Wow, six months in a row for both of you. Thank you, mm -hmm. Captain Awesome. Hakosta seven one nine two. Cassidy Weaver with the resub. Davy Dave Boy with the ten dollars. Is that two and one, Davy Dave Boy? We appreciate. We appreciate you. that. Hey, little pickles. Thank you all so much for being here with us. Thank you for your support. Like we said, the best thing you can do is watch. That's what we make a show for. But we love, love, love that you're loving the show enough to support us in other ways. Remember, we are, we're not asking for money. Money is a weird construct. Yes. But hey, you know what we also love? We love gifts. We love it when you leave story suggestions to cover on the show. We love it when you... Um, clip things we love all of these things at first i thought you said gifts yeah don't give us money give us gift cards to red lobster <laughs> look money is weird we don't just love money we love gifts we don't love money <laughs> we love true. presents no. gifts gifts um, no tea I just, yep, that was very funny to me. <laughs> uh, lots of kittens in the live studio audience mentioning homemade prongles. Fun fact, I wrote some jokes for the prongles campaign. Uh, 
before we knew all the things that we know now Crime about cards against pocket. humanity. Thank you. Um, we love you very much, BBs. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Anthony, where can they find you on the internet? Oh my goodness, so many places. And in most of them, I'm at A Carboni. But here on Twitch, I'm at Anthony Carboni. Twitch, you cowards, it's mine. Give it back to me. Uh, my computer, the ship of Theseus, has been having issues, so regular streams have been a problem. But I, And I know I say this all the time, I think I've fixed it. Always, th always says so. Always says so. We'll find out today at four whether I have or not. So mm -hmm. follow me to find out if I'm crying or laughing. Could be both. Uh, also, today is a Friday, so there's a new episode of my science comedy improv podcast with Jeff Kanata. We have concerns. You can find that at wehaveconcerns.com. And you can find me everywhere on the internet, internet at Not Sage. I'm live on my channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. This Saturday is a little wonky. Maybe we'll do a Sunday stream instead because uh, I have a secret shoot. Uh, but today at 3 p.m. Pacific, you can find me on the Smosh Games channel for games. I think we're playing Moving Out and maybe some Mario Party. It's going to be very fun. Not we're the doing game little... Moving Out. They're watching the Billy Joel musical mm -hmm. Moving Out. Yep, we're going to be doing a little stream from in-studio, and it's going to be very, very fun, a little couch co-op. So, I don't know, come and hang out with us if you're into that sort of thing. Don't forget to follow the channel. We have a bunch of other really, really cool programming on here. Uh, Failed Save on Friday nights. We'll be back uh, in some time, which that date will be announced very, very soon. We're doing something special to announce it. Uh, lots of stuff coming there. Uh, Damsel Dice and Everything Nice is tomorrow night. That is at 6 p.m. Pacific. It is our Disney princess role-playing game. And all kinds of other stuff. We have one time on the internet. Bijan was here earlier. It's a lot of fun. And this show, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Go check out the VOD for Fan Made Creations episode of we On Time on the Internet and watch me talk about uh, a very good, a very good uh, part of the Sonic the Hedgehog fan community. Uh, we'll be back on Monday with hopefully two mics. Bye, friends. Hey, you know, you never know. Bye, friends. Bye.